This is where the magic happens, baby. This is uh, actually where my first ever video was. Filmed it downstairs, did a little treadmill tempo. Um, I still use this same treadmill today. Up uh, over here we got a little bit of motivation for these runs. I'm wiped up now to Allie. She's my girlfriend, but Taylor Swift still in the frame a little bit. It's, it's blue collar, but this is sort of just where it all started and um, I can get everything I need to be done, done down here. My brother and I, we shared a room our whole life. <laughs> we didn't share a bed our whole life, obviously. These are two twin beds. <laughs> uh, college stuff, high school, eight or eight thing. Um, I don't know, middle school, 2011 this is, Christ. I haven't been home in like, you know, about a year now. Besides just this one weekend, I came home for four days. So it's really, it's nice to feel grounded again and go back to the roots of uh, just where I grew up. And, you know, not a lot has changed in the house, but I feel older now. I feel significantly older than I did when I first went to Boulder and then Seattle. Yeah, so obviously I'm not with the Brooks Beast anymore. Um, I'm no longer training with the Brooks Beast, with Danny Mackey's group. Um, finally got a chance to talk to Danny and we had a really good conversation and uh, he totally understood um, that it wasn't gonna continue to work and um, we're in a really good spot with our relationship and I'm forever grateful for how awesome of a coach he was and like, you know, 11 out of 13 of the people on the Beast this year PR'd so it was really cool to just be a part of a team that, uh, you know, was, the most successful year for the Brooks Beast. And just, just to see that success was, was awesome. And, you know, I wish I could have had more of my own success, but, you know, with injuries and sicknesses, that's just the name of the game with running. Um, so yeah, I'm home now for, you know, the next six to eight weeks. And uh, before I went home, I was just back and forth in my head, kind of going through that, like, just scary thought process of like, do I want to, do I want to even do this anymore? Um, and like, you know, it's been, it's been two or three years since I've run a PR and I really, for a while was like, I, I just don't know if I, if I want to continue training at a high level. Um, I'm not necessarily a young buck anymore. And um, I think in the last year and a half, I've, I've gone from this overly optimistic, fun guy to just, I've, I've seen failure for the first time. Um, I failed so many times to, to get back and, and get into PR shape. That it does, it takes a toll on you. Um, so that's why I wanted to come home to kind of just figure out if I wanted to keep even doing this anymore. But uh, what gets me kind of out of bed every day to, to want to keep going and, and want to keep training is just like, I, I know that do have more to give to the sport and whether that's running a PR or just continuing to, to film my journey as a you know semi-pro runner at this point I feel like I would be doing a disservice to my audience and to myself if I didn't give it just one last go at it it's so easy to see these professional runners um, on Instagram and you know other people have YouTube channels and, and see how successful it is and it's essentially like a highlight reel what you see and I've always tried to keep my channel authentic with the downs as well and at this point I'm, I'm, I'm kind of running for for the people out there that are just like me and honestly the majority of runners who experience failure so often like 90% of us never reach that dream but I think it's all about just having the dream. And like, I didn't know if I wanted to do it anymore for a while and I, I, can't, I can't let it go. And uh, I, I feel like I can live with myself if I give it one last go and you know, one last ride truly. Um, but I just wanna do everything in my power to continue to train at a high level and for that, 
it's kind of going back to my roots right now and having my dad coach me. I think the last time we worked out together was a year and a half ago. Is that about right? Yeah. A year and a half, well, it was back in May, wasn't it, before you took off for Colorado? Yeah. I think the day before I went to Boulder, we went, that was the last time I was at Weston's track. Oh, oh, that's right, we did that time trial with Cody, right? Yeah. But, and Ari ran like a 4 didn't he, didn't, oh shit. Didn't he go 4 one yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. What's yeah. What's up, pussy? <laughs> we got Keith, then we got Johnny. Yeah, oh. yeah. Uh, it's gonna be good. Don't hold back, Keith. I am Keith Brown, Spencer Brown's father. I think that Spencer progressed in college, but he didn't progress quite to the level that I thought he would. Spencer became a good college runner, but not a great college runner. I don't think he ever really competed well in college, and I think that somewhat has to do with uh, the sort of emphasis on times. So much, he became one of these guys who was always looking for a time, but not really competing well. And I think that's sort of caught up with him over the years. So at this point, I feel like Spence needs a remake. I, I need to sort of do a rebuilding of him. Uh, he's not strong enough. He's never been strong enough. Uh, in my opinion, in the races that he's in. He's never really reached that, that level where he's competing in, in races. He's just running for a time. He's hanging on for dear life, quite honestly. That's what he's doing. <laughs> and that's different than when I knew him in, as a runner in high school. I felt he was competitive then. He went into races really with the idea that he could win a race. Whereas I think in college, he was just simply trying to place in a race and it's and it's a subtle difference well it's actually a big difference and I think it changed his it subtly changed him as a competitor and in some ways he's lost that that side of it and now I think he needs to through training he sort of build his confidence uh, so he is more of a competitor. Spence and I have talked about this thought we uh, as far as you know, how do you rebuild yourself? And, and I think one of the traps uh, that I have to be careful with in him is that uh, you don't just do what worked for you eight years ago. Some of the stuff will be close to what it used to be, but there's just different nuances that I feel that he has to do in order to be better. It's up to him to be able to, to accept, you know, the changes that I'm asking for him. And, and I think he has accepted, he wants to be better but he's got to do things differently. And it's gonna, it's gonna be hard. I, I think it's admirable on his part that he's trying to, to uh, take a stab at it. I, I think uh, he's putting himself out there. You know, he, he in some ways has, has not succeeded uh, to, the length, to, the, to the place that he wanted to, both in college and uh, professionally. So he's sort of, you know, he's, he's willing to, to to try and, I, and that's great. His age isn't a factor, you know, it's just uh, the will, if he's got the will to do it. Yeah. And he seems to want to do it, so I'm here to support him. We're going to the Wilton Invitational right now. Got my high school Wilton Invitational uh, crew neck on. And what's cool is that I haven't been to this race since I was a senior in high school when I raced it last um, because I'm always in college in the fall. But before we go to the Wilton Invitational, got a little special thing we're going to do. First bite of an athlete's special. A lot going on there. Soft nine. Whoa. It's a good thing to name a running channel off of. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, this gets definitely if you're in Wilton, definitely worth getting the athlete special. For sure. 
Wow, I would have never thought I'd see the guy, the man, the myth, the legend, Chris Alvarado, former Georgetown legend back in the day. But <laughs> we haven't seen each other in years. Of this yeah, day, yeah. But... <laughs> Favorite part? Um, yeah. Probably Spencer's like hand, hair transformation from the bullet back to like what? You get a little done. inspiration here? Yeah, yeah. At this point, I got to train with arguably the best middle distance team in the country for a year. And I've already broken four minutes in the mile. You know, it's like, why are you continuing to do this? Why do you want to continue doing it? And I just, like, I keep going back to, like, I can't let it go. And, and I still love it. I'm really excited for this next chapter, the last ride. I can stay consistent, stay smart with my training, and not get injured, then I'll have a shot just like anyone else would. And like I said earlier, I'm, I'm, I'm also doing it for those out there, like the everyday man who's just grinding away on their own, doing it for themselves, and who experience failure on so many levels. I have another opportunity to do it, and I have this amazing platform that I can take you guys on with YouTube to show the journey. and and really just getting back to embracing the process. The tentative plan is that I'm gonna be home for the next six weeks, as I was saying, training away, and then I'll be going back to Seattle until 2022, and then from there it's open. Really excited to take you guys on one more time and see what we can get done. <laughs>